through Signal Integrity basic series of videos, I am going to teach you how to define pre-layout constraint for data and address net on DDR2 interface. In this video, you will learn how to start SI Design Setup Wizard from Allegro PCB Editor 17.4, how to edit layouts cross section using SI Design Wizard. We'll also learn how to identify supply nets in your design. Apart from that, we'll cover how to define device classes for discrete components. So let's get started. In the first step, open PCB Editor 17.4, and for demonstration, I'm going to use Statics GX Development Board which is a FPGA controller board with DDR2 interface. So let's open that board file first. For that, go to file, open, and I have saved it in desktop. Go to desktop, Cybasics, and just open this board file. Now stage is set to run the SI design setup wizard and configure it for running any signal integrity simulation. To do that, we have to go to setup, more, and click over SI design setup. So this is the first window and here we are not going to set up any SI library or differential pair. So we'll just uncheck those and click over next. Now in this section, we have to select what are the nets we're going to simulate. So as of now, you can see all the nets are selected. So let's uncheck those first. And in our case, we're going to simulate for data nets, address net and data strobe. So let's select those only. To do that, you have to just scroll down and select parallel bus data, parallel bus strobe and parallel bus address. And after selecting those, just click on next. Using these two buttons, you can export and import selected nets. So in future, if you wanted to do the simulation or do any changes on those, you can simply import those. Now in this window, you have to select all the supply nets. So as of now, only supply net is selected, which is ground and its voltage is zero volt. And from this menu, you have to select what are the supply nets you're going to use on your simulation. So in our case, we're going to use 0.9 volt only. So for that, you have to just select it and here we'll get another two option. First option is assign voltage to selected net. So let's assign that. This is 0 0.9 volt and click on OK. So as soon as you'll assign the voltage, it will be shifted to the right side. So that means we have included this supply net and we don't need to include any other net. So click over next. Now it will be asking, there are still 21 possible nets, which can be supply nets. But in our case, we are going to simulate only data bus, which has 0.9 volt pull up register only. So we are not, we don't need to include any other supply net. So after clicking over no, you will see a SI design audit window. SI design audit help to find out if design setup is ready to go or has some issues while defining different properties. So as of now, we can just ignore all the errors and click over OK. Next, you will see setup design cross section. So as I told you, this is statics GX development board. And here we have to put the correct cross section or correct stack up of the board. To do that, you have to click over manually edit existing cross section button. And once you'll click, the cross section editor will open and here you can add all the details. So in this case, I have to do some changes on the dielectric thickness. So I'm just going to do that quickly. Once you are done with all the changes, you have to click over apply button and OK. So we have made all the changes. Now you have to just quickly click couple of next. So till here we have done all the changes. Now again, click over next button. After setting the stack up, we'll see a setup component classes window. And here you can see we have couple of component classes. As of now, it is discrete and IC. So there are three possible component classes. One can be IC, discrete or IO. And if you observe in our case, classes are not properly assigned. To assign correct device classes, we have to move this register pack to discrete and this connector to IO. 
To do that, you have to select register pack 56.5%, 16 pin SMD 56, and just click over discrete button. So as you can see, this particular register component move to discrete class. Similarly, we'll select connector and click over IO. So now you can see all the three classes are properly assigned. All the discrete components are in discrete class. IC is in the IC class and connector is in the IO class. After setting that, let's click over next button. Now we will got to know there is one component which is not placed, but we are using it in simulation. To do that, you have to just select it. And here you can see the component is on our cursor position. We can just place it anywhere you want. I'm just going to place it here. All right. So we have placed the component again, click over next. Okay. These are the things that are done. All right. So now the next step is we have to assign models to component. So as of now, out of these many number of components, we're going to assign models for discrete only. So here we'll see a button which is create default models for all the discrete components. So let's click over this one. And as you can see, all the default models are assigned to register packs and registers. So let's close that. Still there are two components. One is connector and one is our FPGA controller, which don't have model assigned till now. So that we will do later. Let's click over next. Now it is asking there are still two components with no assigned models. We know that. So yeah, we'll just click over yes button. Now it is asking which type of simulation you wanted to run. So for this series of videos, we're going to learn how to define constraint for reflection. So let's select that first and make sure you have selected TL sim out of these many simulators and click over next. So till now we have set up the SI design wizard and assign models to discrete components. Now click over finish and save the project. To do that, we'll just click over file and save. In the next video, we will learn how to assign IBIS models to FPGA controller manually. For more tutorials, visit us at resources.emaeda.com and don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel.